Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Time for me to answer your comments. So, I think the last one I did in the previous one was aside. Well, very probably, because the next one is Manji answering the previous one. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, Manji. Thank you very much indeed. Any time, definitely. Okay, so, hi there, Manji. Um, Nora Mandur, she always pays fastidious attention to her outfits in order to look more attractive in public's eyes. So, in public eyes or in the public's eyes. Okay, so either in public eyes or the public's eyes. This is a good example of fastidious, Nora. I think in... Spanish, you say chaquetero. You change sides when it suits you. Well, chaqueta in Spanish is a jacket. So thank you for this, Fran. Yeah, because I didn't know this word, so it's a new one for my vocabulary. I appreciate that. And Nora Mandur. To be a good researcher, he needs to be pen painstakingly fastidious and tenacious in his research work. That's very good English. I like this adverb describing an adjective. That's very good. Okay, Nora. Every student must have his own volitional space to speak out his thoughts, feelings and ideas far away from the dogmatic clutches of traditionalist teaching style which is predominantly predicated on this dichot dichotomous hierarchical paradigm. The teacher orders and the student follows. Volitional space. Volition. Volitional is because they want to have it. I guess a volitional space because like that, th this is provided of their own volition, yeah, and they want to have the possibility to do it. Okay, I like this. I quite agree with you. Um, the hierarchical paradigm, teacher orders the student follows. No, we need to change that very definitely. Student-based learning, student-centered learning. Okay, good work, Nora. Thank you. And, dearest teacher, can I say the following sentence? Being a nonconformist bohemian teacher is sometimes the very generative power of ingenuity, per se, recalling these poetic lines by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged. I think diverged is the original word, in the woods, in a wood. Yet I took the one less travelled by. OK, let's try this. Being a nonconformist bohemian teacher is sometimes uh, a very, I would say, a very generative, uh, huh, is the very gen... I can, OK, so, yeah. Let's try this. Sometimes being a bohemian teacher is sometimes the very generative power of ingenuity itself. I'd like to add itself here. Per se, recalling these poetic lines by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood and yet I took the one less travelled. That's good. Well done, Nora. So, Nadim Akram. Please, 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 I'm getting confused. Please explain the meaning of I'm faced with a decision. This means you have a decision to make. The decision is in front of your face. It's looking at you. So this just means I have to make a decision. I can't keep delaying with it. Yeah, you're faced with a decision. Either yes or no. Either do it or don't do it. OK, so Nadim. Yes, here again, faced with a decision, and the same again. OK, John P. Murphy. I just bought some miniature daffodils called tete-a-tete, -tete, and I just wanted to know what it means. So a tete-a-tete -tete is a private conversation. I think these are the 
really small daffodils. I think I've got some of these um, cyclamenic or something like cyclamenic daffodils. They've got just very small flowers. They're very pretty, John. Okay, Mohammed. Narcissists tend not to refer to anyone as, to refer to somebody as sublime. They prefer to be themselves referred to as the sublime ones. Absolutely. That's good. Well done, Mohammed. Nora. The true teacher must shy away from, I love this, must st stay away from indoctrinating his... So, the true teacher. Yeah? And you're into uh, gender neutrality. The, must shy away from indoctrinating there. Then it can be masculine or feminine. The, the true teacher must shy away from indoctrinating their young learners with their personal thoughts and ideals in order to afford them an autonomous space to reflect and critically think about different aspects of life from their own subjective viewpoints. Okay, you could use his here, but it's much better because like that it avoids gender stereotyping. Thank you so much, dearest teacher. Thank you for your comments, Nora. Thank you for your support. So, Patricia, thanks, Alex, for all your kind thoughts. As far as my comments are concerned, do not hesitate to ramp up the criticism whenever warranted. When I go overboard, I, so, I accumulate faux pas. So, ha, faux pas. How do I make this plural? I would probably say F-A-U-X, faux pas, faux pas, huh, P-A-S, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how to write that, okay, several faux pas, um, I think just as you've written it, sometimes this may, may culminate in a happy outcome with a C, say a pas de deux, okay, a dance, even a pretty deja vu episode okay at other times it's like bowing deep overboard into the crocodile's jaws mm, bowing deep this overboard bowing like going overboard like bowing deep into bowing deep overboard maybe into the crocodile's jaws when i'm painting I have to mull things over, think about them, swill the stuff in my mind, wash it out, swipe off bits and then just have a go at it again. This is especially true if I'm toying with or coming to terms with more than two or three languages. But even when I toy, I toy seriously. My greatest fear is not coming up with a cohesive mosaic of writing. It's really good. I'm wondering about this bowing deep overboard. I'd probably say like going too overboard, bowing deep into going overboard like it's like going overboard and bowing deeply into the crocodile's jaws it's still very very good patricia hi patricia this is slow sunset i love your writing if you don't mind me asking do you have connections to portugal your name is portuguese yes salana that h a at the end is so portuguese and Patricia says, slow sunset vibes. Thank you, um, slow sunset. No, not at all. I don't mind. Yes, I do have connections there in a way. OK, so Mohammed, it's great one. It's already added to my favourites. Good English. This callow kid was growing like weeds. Yeah, huh. maybe like a weed, but weeds would do. When it's used to describe the one who has no experiences. Okay. When it's used to what to describe one who has no experiences, it reminds me of being green. If you're callow, you're definitely green. It says green between the minds. So Bonnie Nibbert. Hi, Bonnie. Thanks for the information. Pro bono. Free. <laughs> for the good of the public. My pleasure. Me too. Thank you for reading and comment and correcting my sentences. Highly appreciated. Yeah, but you do very good work. You're, you, I don't have to 
to correct you much. You write very nicely. So, fastidious. Um, these are synonyms. Meticulous, assiduous, scrupulous and picky. Pecky, a bird pecks. Ossital, many thanks. My pleasure, Ossi. Thanks for watching. Nitu. Experts say two doses of vaccine may not be enough to build extra immunity against COVID attack. One would require to take a booster dose as a prophylactic drug. That sounds perfect. Deleted the old sentence. Wasn't happy with that one. This one seems better. Yes, it does. Thanks for watching, Aussie. Paved the way to prepare for. Natalia Mor Morozova. He looked at the, at the door, slammed in front of him with a scowl. Okay, he looked at the door, slammed. I'd probably say that had been slammed, but it works like that. Next day, I had reviewed this video. Hi, Funda. Great to have you. I would probably say next day I reviewed. It's probably better with a, a pass simple. Okay, so Patricia for stave off to keep away. This, what, this explanation was as unclear as mud. Okay, slow sunset vibes, but we normally say as clear as mud. Yeah, you don't have to put the un. Yeah, this is um, sarcasm. It was as clear as mud. Mud is not clear, so it's just not clear. Patricia. They grew up in a highly toxic environment and were saddled with a series of upheavals in their lives, which they only managed to stave off to push away or circumvent, go round, by desperate and dogged determination. Good English. As well as the benevolent whispers and wily winks of Dame Fortune. I like this wily winks. Wily means sly and intelligent. Who, beyond a, simulate, uh, a simulated shadow of doubt, had that certain Mona Lisa smile. Thank you very much, Patricia. There's nothing wrong with this at all. This is certainly very good. I love wily winks of Dame Fortune. Uh, circumvent by desperate and dogged determination. That's great. So, Ossie for Scatter, thank you for watching. Roland, thank you, Alex. It's my pleasure to correct them. So, Ali Mo has been doing Identify the Number. Some of these are pretty difficult. I say them pretty fast. Okay, Navanitha, Krish. He had been thinking about who would be the turncoat. That he definitely compromised the nation confidential details to our enemy. Almost Navanitha. He had been thinking about who would be the turncoat that I think that would because this he you're trying to use it to talk about the turncoat. He had been thinking about he had been thinking about who would be the turncoat that would definitely compromise the nation's confidential details to our enemy. That's pretty good, Navanitha. It's good use of uh, um, turncoat. Immaculate, so rantas, so it's immaculate with an I, or meticulous, fastidious, demanding immaculate work. Slow sunset. The summer heat always hinders outdoor activity. Nonetheless, that is not an excuse to not become more physically active. Your laziness is hindering you from potentially reaching your goals. Often students don't perform as well as they could in speaking exams due to their nervousness hindering their great English. <laughs> well done, slow sunset. No mistakes and a good piece of writing. Well done. So, Akshat, in tandem, can I use it for as, at the same time? Can I use it as, at the same time? Like, her statement had uh, me in hysterics and in tandem pisses me off. Yes, you could. Yeah, both are happening at the same time. They're happening in tandem. Yes, you definitely could.
Jerem, good evening. My boss pays fastidious attention to details to avoid problems down the road. Positive sense, good sentence. My boss pays a fastidious attention to details just to make his underlings do extra work. Negative sense. That's perfect, Jerem. Thank you. And Jerem, again. Benedict Arnold, a famous turncoat. If you actually look, his signature is just here on this. Um, that we, uh, fought bravely for the Americans, then went to the British side after he was passed over, skipped over, for promotion a number of times. Yeah, but that doesn't justify becoming a turncoat. OK, Akshat. She was unequivocally different from what she, being a queen, was expected to be. She was expected to be as a queen. So, I like this first bit. She was unequivocally different from what she, being a queen, was expected to be. From what, from what she was expect, uh, from, I, I'd lose this last bit, yeah? To be uh, what she was expected to be, full stop. She was expected to be a queen. Okay, unequivocally, yes, definitely. VG, good evening. Great to see you, mate. And Erish uh, Guaman, the best teacher ever. Thank you. Deep or depth, wide or width, high or height, long or length. These are important ones to get right. Hello, sir. I'm going to be watching this live stream tomorrow. I could, I'm sorry I couldn't watch it. Well, there's not a problem at all. That's what the recording is for. So, Mohammed, you've got to deal with others pursuant to the kind of treatment you receive from them. OK, that sounds fine use of pursuant, though notice kinder is very informal and pursuant is a bit formal. So in this, you've got to deal uh, with others pursuant to the kind of treatment you receive from them. But it's fine. OK, she dated a fastidious man. Hi there, Manor King. Great to see you. He fastidiously edited my writing. They did fastidious investigation. They investigated fastidiously. They did the investigation. They did investigation fastidiously. Yeah, because if you put it before, then you, I'm looking for the next word. Put your adverbs at the end of your sentences, mannequin. They did the investigation fastidiously, not they did fastidiously. All contracts should be fastidious. I quite agree. OK, VG. My pleasure, VG. Thanks for watching. Huh, I hate people with a terse riposte. Yes, good English. Yo, what's your VG? What's up, mate? Great to have you. Howdy. Have a wonderful week, says VG. The same to you and the same to everybody out there. OK, this is Katya. Nice word. Many thanks, my teacher. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, Katya. 40 love. A pipsqueak, pipsqueak's the video, is a puny, insignificant, puny, weak and small, insignificant person because they are small, young or inexperienced. Someone who can easily be defeated. Thank you. My pleasure. Akshat. Today I have made a silly mistake. It was evening and I thought that I should go buy some ice cream. I whipped out, took out a hundred rupee note from the cupboard. Little did I realise that there were two other, not another, two other rupee notes tucked between the folded note. Notice another only means one more. Yes, Akshat, be careful of this. One finger, another, 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 the other. So, there were two other hundred rupee notes tucked between the folded note I, I was carrying to the mall. After I was done with my shopping, the biller asked me to pay a hundred rupees. The biller, the seller, asked me to pay a hundred rupees and I stupidly gave her three hundred rupees. Luckily, she being honest 
returned me the extra money. Otherwise, I would have been done out of my money. That's very good indeed. Good work, Akshat. I love it. We all make mistakes in life. We can't be perfect. VG, his demeanour indicated that he was very excited about something. Good English. Her stupid demeanour will cost her life one day. Yes, that'll do. I was thinking about cost her her life, but cost her life would do as well. Ha, Akshat. Very often does it happen that people have a different demeanour hidden behind their facades, which the people around them know them as. OK, firstly, you've tried to put an inversion here. Um, it needs to be negative. So if it's a positive adverbial, um, not often does it happen. Rarely does it happen. But this is a positive adverbial and therefore no uh, inversion. Very often it happens that people have a very different demeanour hidden behind their facades, which the people around them, around, know them as. OK, the word order, it's not wrong, but it could be better. Um, but behind their f hidden f their facades, um, these are the. This is the person who, which the people around them know. Okay, so Luke Roberts, you're all an awesome YouTube channel. Good luck with your segue. And Akshat, the reason why the celebrity is liked the most across the country uh, is that he, despite being a being demeaned by the press, manages to exude a calm demeanour. I love this exude, to give off a calm demeanour. OK, this position of the most. The reason why the celebrity is the most liked, put that here, is the most liked across the country, is that he comma, I like that, despite being demeaned by the press, comma, manages to exclude a calm demeanour. I like your little bit of punctuation and addition here. That's very nice, Akshat. Alison's got the demeanour of a man who's very satisfied with his life. OK, Malcolm Allison, maybe. OK, and demeanour, disposition, behaviour. Disposition, character plus behaviour. This is demeanour, yes. Nice elucidation, Maria, dear. So, good work, Maria Mikkonen, and thank you, Manji. Shamshad Dar, online classes often make me have a sleepy demeanour. Yes. OK, that's a good example of demeanour, Shamshad. Killing people in revenge for what they did to you in the past will just demean you. Good English, VG. OK, people who... So, Mohammed. Mohammed Abu Naga. Abu, Abu Naga. People who want benefits from a person in a position of power uh, give them glad hands. Uh, they're glad-handing people ingratiate them to stoop so low to them okay you've got lots of great phrases so i would say people who want something from uh a from a person in a position of power give them the glad hand they glad hand them to ingratiate themselves they stoop so low as to try to ingratiate themselves Speaking of it used metaphorically, it has a lot to do with rolling the carpet for someone, greeting them warmly, rolling out the red carpet. You need an out here, OK? Glad handing, shaking people's hand insincerely, being nice to them because you want something. OK, Akshat. People who, teachers who beat up students should have a patient demeanour especially when dealing with young children. I'm doubtful about the commas around especially. Well, personally, I'm doubtful about this beat up because to beat up here, 
yeah, don't beat yourself up. To me, this beat up gives me the idea of a physical beating. Yeah. Um, so don't beat up. Let's see. Teachers who are aggressive with students should have a patient demeanor, comma, especially, comma. Let's see, you could, this second comma, you can have it or not. I think I'd probably not use it, but it's not wrong, especially when dealing with young children. Okay, it works, Akshat. Vilify should be, uh, be synonymous with demean, yes. Yeah, to vilify someone, to demean them, absolutely. And 40 love, people usually scrounge for money or food. They're trying to get it for free or easily without working for it. My friend is always scrounging for cigarettes. The four is option, he's always scrounging cigarettes. I'm on the scrounge for materials for my workshop. Great work, good, well done, good examples. Akshat, one should never feign one's demeanour to impress someone. If they like one, they are going to accept one the way one is. Okay, I like the way you've used one. Yeah, you might. If they like some, you maybe you could use someone here. They're going to accept the way one, accept one the way one is. I might use someone just in this one, but it's fine. Nigel Bishop, so great to have you. From his kind demeanour, his future wife couldn't possibly know he would demean her. Okay, demeanour, demeanour. Okay, you're playing with words, that's very good. <laughs> okay, good use, you've got both examples. And by the way, Nigel, you said this word swill, your friends would laugh at you. It appeared as, a, as, as the answer to the Wordle quiz a couple of days ago. So... Nigel Bishop again. Rafa Nadal is always fastidious about the arrangement of his water bottles caught side. Good English. Well done, Nigel. Mohammed. Extract. Restrain. Refrain. F so. Extricate. Extract. Restrain. To hold back. To refrain. To forbear. To keep away. To steer clear. To avoid. Mm, I'm happy with the extract. To restrain. Extricate. Maybe extricate is... You see, I think all of these are more like... Uh, stay, get, get out of a situation. Okay, Manji. Wow. So, sir, in my view, your demeanour is something like the following. No S. No S. Assertive. Easy go lucky, I would say happy go lucky, affectionate, amicable, and fearless. Thank you for that, Manji. That's really nice. I like people, I really like that. It's a lovely d description. So, thank you. Notice happy go lucky and like the following with no S. Okay, my motto stick at living life full to the brim. That's good English. Well done, Manji. And AZ Gaming, everything in her demeanour suggests she is obscenely wealthy. Could you please teach us a very tricky part of, of English grammar, know thee, which is the future seen from the past? And this is one example. I knew by that morning I feel exhausted, but I just couldn't refuse her invitation to go dancing. So I knew that by the morning I would feel exhausted. Yeah. So would is the phrase that we use for future in the past. Yeah. OK, so yesterday I knew that tomorrow would be a good day. But if this has already happened, um, I knew that by the time I arrived in, at home, he would have already arrived. OK, so this is past in the future. Would is the future of will when we look at it from the past. OK, so godliness. So happy to watch your videos. I'm glad you like them. Thank you. Godliness. 
and Isa XYZ, a heart, thank you very much. And Patricia, as for her male friends, she used to wonder about their orientation in life and diverging points of view. Not that she had anything against the male sex, she actually adored them, apart from a few exceptions, unlike little Johnny's pals who provided the apples for his childhood passion. She discovered in the others some astounding facts. So apart from a few, so unlike little Johnny's pals, who, okay. Um, they weren't interested in love nor in friendship. Yeah, they weren't interested in love nor were they interested in friendship. Strangely, they weren't even interested in sex or tenderness, but they were interested in money, which they used to wage war. So, money, for which for which they used to wage war in every possible manner. And even in that capacity, they were far from satisfactory. Not surprising, she thought. She often wondered why they wanted to punish the fair sex for things the latter were not responsible for. The fair sex were, was... OK, where is acceptable and could not comprehend till it dawned upon her that they wished to crush her spirit, quite unlike little Johnny Apple, in an attempt to assert their male domination. And this only strengthened her resolve to make them pay the highest price. Henceforth, she would destroy them slowly but surely as they had destroyed her and her friends. Wow, this is one about revenge. This is a very nice piece of writing. Yeah, you asked me to be critical about it, but um, let's see. I'm not sure I could write any, anything that sounded as good as this. So be proud of it, very definitely. Okay, Antonio Vargas Marti Martin Vargas. Hi, Alex. As always, I truly enjoyed your explanation and the examples you provided. One question, though. What would be the f difference between the phrases he has a nasty demeanour and he has a nasty streak? I think the demeanour is maybe more permanent, yeah? And all of him. Whereas he has a nasty streak, this is only sometimes, yeah? Only part of him. He, um, he's, he's normally very friendly, but be careful because he has a nasty streak. So this nasty streak says at times, whereas um, he has a nasty demeanor. This is all of him, yeah? The way he pro projects himself is pretty nasty. So thank you, Antonio. Stringent, strict, have it, having rules with an iron fist, to rule with an iron fist. Stiff, turgid, turgid maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe turgid, I'm not sure. Okay, Mohammed. Sheed, I reckon Tibetan priests can reach an elevated wise demeanour through meditation. As for your your question. You have a jovial demeanour. Thank you, She. That was really nice. Roland. By and large, directors have to deal with child actors. Actors' insouciant demeanour. Their temper tantrums give them the heebie-jeebies. That's good. Little stars have short attention spans like most of their peers. Uh, everything can distract them from their tasks. Little stars have short attention spans like most of their peers. Semicolon. Everything can detract them from their task. This is a comma splice. The director sees the sign of an outburst in the boy's expression and perforce she spends a sheer amount of time. Sheer. An absolute amount of time. No. A large amount of time. A a great amount of time, a considerable amount of time with him, joking around, playing and talking before she ensconces herself in the director's chair and gives the usual sign of 
action, no the, to the camera person. Okay, so, um, sheer, no, this is sheer folly, this is sheer ridiculousness, this is sheer nonsense, total, but she spends a total amount of time with him, doesn't work. Okay, Mohammed, there are, there are a bunch of beliefs we must renounce, so there are a bunch of reliefs, beliefs we must renounce lose them because a bunch of reliefs because they're running at the expense of our dignity yeah because but don't even running they are without the running at the expense of our dignity emma di fazio next you should do the difference between wise up and smarten up okay i answered this question a couple of days ago didn't i um i think to wise up and to smarten up Ha! Huh. Yes, as I said, to wise up, become more intelligent, open your eyes, smell the coffee, see what's happening. But smarten up could go in two different ways. To smarten up, to wise up, to smell the coffee, to notice what's really happening. But I need to smarten myself up, make myself look more elegant. Mohammed Omar, I love your demeanour in lectures. Thank you, Mohammed. Do you like his arrogant demeanour? No, I absolutely hate it, Rizgar. Yeah, thank you, Rizgar. Okay, Mohammed Omar, swill and swell and swall and swall. What's the difference? So, to swill, this, to swell, to get bigger. Yeah, I twisted my ankle and it started swelling. Swoll doesn't exist. And swoll, swoll, swoll and swoll, swoll and swoll, swoll and swoll. Um, swoll, the last one, is a very, very old-fashioned version of swell. Swell, swoll, swollen. Yeah, so I I would say only swill and swell exist. Swill, swell, swall, swall. Swill, swell, swall, swall. Swill, swell, swall, swall. Yeah. Okay, Sheed. As he walked by a dirty street, the gentleman looked fastidiously at the poorly and dirty dressed children playing around him. Almost sheed. So, as the, he walked by a dirty street, the gentleman looked fastidiously at the poorly dressed children. The poorly dressed, dirty children playing. The poorly and dirtily dressed children. Yeah, you need to make this in an ad, as an adverb if you want it here, or move it to before children um, if you want to keep it as an adjective. You are a quirky teacher for me. Yeah, I'm a bit strange as a teacher. I'm not that traditional about it. I don't like grammar very much. I like. I want people to be able to talk. Yeah, because what's the point of learning a language if you can't talk and have conversations with people? Okay, so let's see. Okay, just a couple more. The answer is aside. Absolutely, Jai. Well done. Osita, Demina, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, okay, this one's going to be good. So, Patricia, A's Demina, my Demina, Alexander, amiable, lovable, endearing, X, I'll come to that later, amusing, uh, nimble-witted, naughty, daring, exhilarating, rebellious. The X, it would seem, stands for kisses and hugs. Notice X's and O's in English. These are kisses and hugs. You can ask little Johnny Apple. He wouldn't beg to differ, but he may bring you a pear instead of an apple. Sleep well. Dictionary dreams. Take care. Thank you very much indeed, Patricia. Um, that's a really nice description of me. I love it. Yeah, that's really nice. So, take care. Sleep, sweet dreams. Sleep well. Um, all of you take care of yourself. And I will be back tomorrow morning with another installment of 
questions and answers and comments so thanks all for coming if you enjoyed the video you can give it the rating if you didn't don't you can even give it a thumbs down and i'll see you all next week not next week tomorrow it's not, it's not a live stream bye bye